Hey everyone, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 52 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and just cool stuff you want to know. And in this episode, we brought back uh, John Capobianco to talk to us about collaborating on tools and actually applying uh, software development practices into network automation. So, um, John, uh, what are we looking at here? Kick, kick us off. Well, hi, everybody. I'm really happy to be back. And if you missed the last episode, Senior IT Integrator and Planner with the Canadian Parliament, the House of Commons in Ottawa, Canada, by day. And, you know, most of you probably know me more in my open source work in the community on my Merlin project. So we're looking at how I've taken over a few years, it feels like, network <laughs> automation and moved it into a, a the software development, software design principle is my latest approach that's been very, uh, very successful using what's called the Django framework. So in the DevNet associate book, and we had to have a bet here that I can stay still for 12 minutes to help with the bandwidth, <laughs> but I don't know, I gotta know that. We're a couple minutes in, I am already wiggling. Um, in this official cert guide, on literally, I know the page number, 3132, they talk about software design principles. And part of the exam is understanding some of these principles, one of which is the model view controller approach. And Django, you can see on Matt's screen here, he's in the Django admin page. And we're going to come back to this page. But let's start with the model. So one of the tools that I use is the Cisco Pi ATS framework and libraries. Some people know the libraries as Genie. Now what they do is take CLI, standard output command, and gives me structured JavaScript object notation back. Now Matt, can you flip over to our live share VS Code session? So again, we're in the live share in VS Code and Matt, and Kareem and I are all able to look at the same code. So the code in the screen in the top right, this is a model of the learn interface library. And as you can see, there is all kinds of great information down to CRC errors, input, unicast, output, total packets, the last time it was cleared, everything you would get from show interface at the CLI. And using that, you know, there's many ways to think of it, a proxy, a, it really is a parser, right? It parses the CLI to JSON. We can map the JSON using the controller Python, remember model view controller, the programming, the logic, the engine is the controller. So that controller can take the JSON we've parsed and populate this model. Now, if you go back to that admin panel, and if you scroll down and find learn interfaces, so there is for each interface, and you can click on another one, Matt, just pick one at random, that model ingests the JSON and writes it to post GRE SQL or an SQL database like SQL Lite. We can then work with it in this admin panel. We could change things, delete things, update things, just take it in as an administrator. And in the previous video, Matt, that button you clicked through the web interface actually populated this. That's from the DevNet Sandbox, by the way, everyone. That's a free DevNet Sandbox that I use to do my development on. Now. The views, to me, is really the neat thing. This is great. We have the model, we have the controller, the logic to transform the model and populate it. But now we want to present it to our users. Before I talk about views, Kareem, Matt, do you have any comments or questions? Matt, what is yeah. it like so just the experience in an admin panel like that? Um, I mean, it's it's a ton of information. I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking at. If I was dealing with this data, um, I would think I need to parse out 
the things that are actually important. I'm sure everything in here is somewhat important, but it's not all of the information I need to either make a change or or uh, make a decision on what's going on. So I think that's what you're relating to, if if I'm right, John. <laughs> I think I think just to follow for for our kind of our snackers to follow on of what's going on essentially here is what you've done, which is awesome, by the way, what you've done is you've taken the capabilities of what PyATS has and to basically treating your infrastructure as code and talking to the devices. And you build a wrapper around that essentially, which is Merlin. And Merlin allows you to have this cool interface into PyATS Genie, which is their SDK, to be able to make these commands back and forth without having to actually code it. And you're also managing the the basically the the different um, calls that PyATS allows you to do within this um, this uh, Apache the Django kind of um, application um, interface, I should say. This is the power of APIs, you guys. Like every time you make a, a Matt is clicking on you know learn an interface or you know look at platform slots, um, there's an underlying you know call that's being made to the SDK that basically fires off a call to our sandbox that says, hey, give me that information. And then you're presenting it in a nice cool way. So that's kind of like the the summary of what we've we've talked about. It's it's a lot of information. It took me a bit to get my head around it, but it's awesome. It's well, you, really you, useful. Thank you. You you've both nailed it. You really have. And Matt, I was kind of a leading question. This is great <laughs> in an admin panel like this, but it's not, it, there's the friction here. And Kareem, I love PyTS, I love Python. I even still have some affection for Ansible. Mm -hmm. But there was still a lot of, the people around me didn't know it necessarily enough to really operate it at, at production scale. And, and I have business consumers that are interested in network state information. So those two things drove me to this approach where wouldn't it be great if an operator could just literally click show IP interface brief in a button, not have to know Python, not have to know, you know, any of those things, a virtual environment, and I need to clone this and pip install that. And it's a lot to deal with. That was kind of my approach is to make it just a nice, easy, everyone loves a button and a web page, right? And then, so Matt, if you could quickly go back to those the latest, the pages we opened using views. We haven't talked about views yet, but a view is kind of its own connection of three different things. The URL, so what Matt types in his browser and he's gonna open say learn config. He already has it open there. Well, in the browser, like in the URL, like, like google.com or cisco.com, we, we stage the URL we want that triggers the view. Now, the view is some logic here that interacts with our controllers and our models. And then we template, and you've heard me talk about Jinja templates for probably five years now. Yeah. Django has a templating language, very similar to Jinja, that lets me build this page that you're looking at. Now, Matt, I mean, you agree, right? The Django, yes, the admin panel is nice, but now you can just type in VLAN 101 and it'll filter down and just give you that VLAN's information or whatever you want. There's a search in the top right, you know, so that's the interface VLAN 101 and then the JSON that we've learned through PyETS beside it. Now that's config, which is a little different. And if you could click on the interface one that you've opened, this is what the table, that model that I showed you at the beginning, this is what it translates to in a view. A nice HTML page, a nice data table. We can search, find, filter, sort, paginate. Now, Matt has another tab open. And again, to take it to the next level. Originally, guys, this was just a simple HTML table, which was good. It looked pretty, but you couldn't interact with it. And that's, it wasn't quite there yet. The community, again, the pillars of, pillars of network automation, community, and this kind of open discussion like snack minutes, plugging into community. Someone said, you have to check out datatables.net. That's where Matt is now. It's free, open, easy. You can see there's three steps there that take any 
and I mean any HTML table and like pump it up on steroids, guys. It's like commercial grade <laughs> web views. So Matt, go back to the learn interface. I'm gonna show off a little bit. Go to the interface one. <laughs> click on, go all the way to the left. Click on the copy button if you could. See how it says copy to clipboard? Now do start, run and run notepad and um, hit paste in notepad or in an email or whatever you want. It's in your clipboard, that data table. Click on PDF for me, if you don't mind. And it's it's mm -hmm. a PDF. And again, this is my computer in Quebec. Matt is in Cleveland. He clicked on a button. He's got the PDF version of this table in the click of a button. And I don't want to take any credit for that. <laughs> that is datatables.net, the power of open source community code. There's the PDF. You can attach that to an email, off you go. So that, now, the real neat one is print. If you have a local printer attached on your network, Matt, you can go back and just click print and your Windows print button should fire open here. You can send it to your printer. I need the inventory. I need what interfaces are down. I need to run this to a meeting real quick. Well, go to the data table, click print, take it to your meeting, right? It's pretty awesome, right? It's pretty awesome. I think, I think for me is, you know this, you've built this, you've contributed to this. A lot of folks contributed to this. Um, how easy is it to actually get started with all of that? So if I want to deploy my own Merlin and have it, is it, does it just come delivered in a container? Is it code somewhere out there? What is, what's the delivery mechanism for this? So that, that was another evolutionary. I love the world of Docker and containers. If you go, if you go back to the VS code, Matt, you can see that I have a Docker file and in the readme file, the instructions are to clone the repository, so simple git clone in my open repo on github.com, automate your network. Now there's several repositories there, but you want Merlin Unchained for this Django experience. Then you just say Docker Compose up and it will bring up about a dozen containers, the ecosystem of different containers and different ways to consume and view, and you'll have Merlin. Now it works, here's the disclaimer, you know, I'm one guy in my basement doing this on every three minutes. <laughs> of, I, you know, iOS XE is coming. iOS is coming. Different APIs are coming. There's always things coming. Right now, it works with NXOS. It, it really does as a platform. But the best experience is to go to the DevNet Sandbox. This is all in the README. Get the Nexus 9K Sandbox. This is kind of tailor-made for that right now. Um, and, and it'll just work, all the buttons, all the inputs. It's pretty exciting stuff, but it's, if you wanted to make your own, honestly, your own Django application, it's, I don't think it's as hard as people have implied, Django in general, models, views, controllers. You just tackle them one at a time. And what's fun to me is that there's backend development, my, my SQL stuff, <laughs> there's, Python development, the controller stuff, and then there's this front-end development, JavaScript and style sheeting and HTML. So you really like, you really become a full-stack full full developer, stack. right? Yeah. And it's, there's, there's great help, great readme's. I have to really mention Flo Pachingers. I hope I get his name right. I, I hope that's right. Pa he wrote <laughs> Johan. He wrote Johan and a series of blogs. I'm hoping snack in the minutes you could put the links to those those were my inspiration for this i owe him a huge thank you for just planting the seed that we can take this model view controller approach and make modern web type solutions for network infrastructure and automation so so look into those blog posts there that really is where i got my start here it's community right he shared that knowledge with us as a as a community and we can adopt it and adapt it. And he's done some fabulous work. This looks great. I mean, I I'm excited to actually dig into um, the front end stuff. I've historically found that relatively tedious, honestly. And so I'm pumped to take a look at data tables and see kind of behind the scenes how you built out the, the front end interface. 
But thank you for sharing this with us. Everyone go check out Merlin um, if you want to uh, see how this was all built behind the scenes. It's an open source project uh, supported by John. And um, thank you for your time again, John. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone took uh, some ideas away on how to collaborate, how to tie into the model view controller uh, methodology, and also um, a little bit of um, inspiration on building out a uh, Django uh, web application. So thank you, John, and thank you, Snackers. Thanks, John. Thanks, Snackers.